morning and welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. This is Brock Shimano. Today is Tuesday, the 20th. Uh, the party we experienced all last week in grain seems to be over. We were down yesterday and again in the overnight, mostly due to a stronger dollar. We saw increases in treasury yields. We see a weaker outside market. Crude is falling and equities are down as well. Not only that, but we have weather raining on our parade. The Midwestern growers are going to experience a little bit of uh, wetness out there. Brock, can you walk us through what we're seeing and uh, what we uh, will be seeing in the next 10 days? Yeah, it looks like the next 8 to 14 days we will see temps well above normal. The darker the color on this weather map provided by Planalytics, uh, more above average we're going to see on the temperatures. Looks like we're going to be 60 to 70 percent above average in most of the growing regions of the Midwest. As far as precipitation is concerned, we're going to be well above average on precipitation as well. Looks like we're going to be about 40 to 50 percent above average on the precipitation levels for a vast majority of the growing areas of the Midwest and in the Southern Plains. Speaking of the Southern Plains, we've had a great start to our hard red winter wheat crop, which was pressuring the winter wheat crop, or excuse me, the winter the wheat contracts yesterday in Chicago and in Kansas City. Cody, we had some crop progress and conditions come out yesterday. Why don't you run us through those numbers? Yeah, crop progress came out yesterday, and, it, and it's very positive. You know, we're seeing increases in the wheat condition in the key growing areas: Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, all improving. Uh, improving their good to excellent ratings, so that's very good to see. Why don't we switch over to the Planalytics uh, Greenness Report, and what this shows us is a little bit how, how well that crop is developing. Uh, it gives us an early indication of, of crop development, like I said, and of course uh, Planalytics also comes out with these great yield forecasts. Uh, they, were, they were spot on last year. It was really impressive. What are we seeing early on? What are we seeing in the week? Wheat, uh, yeah, I mean, basically what we're looking at here, this first map, we're seeing what March of this year looks like compared to an average March. You can see that we're well above average on our greenness right now and the biomass. Most of that is due to us being ahead of pace on our uh, growing season right now. We're about 10 to 14 days ahead of where we normally are. And if you compare this to where we were in February, we're actually better off than we were even in a couple weeks ago in February. We've seen favorable rains down south. And we've also seen the, you know, favorable temperatures down there as well. So this is only going to add more pressure to the wheat market that is already uh, looking to move a little bit lower in the early going today. Well, that sounds good. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we're back, we're going to talk a little bit about the dollar and some of the technical levels to watch here as we sell off. Well, it's definitely earned me more money. Just, just like Decatur, they were paying 70 cents more for some or for uh, summer corn there in August. We were hauling corn 100 mile for 40 cents, and we're making 30 cents. And I wouldn't even known that price was probably on there. I wouldn't have thought of calling Decatur, but when you go to the Growers Edge page, then it, it takes all that running around out of it for you. Welcome back to Green TV. The markets are open in Chicago, so let's take a look at the Fire Tip Trading software for the live quotes. As you can see, corn is down 13 and a half, soybeans are down 19 and a quarter, Chicago wheat off 10 and a quarter, and Kansas City wheat off 10 and a quarter as well. Cody, we've seen a couple of days of selling in the corn market. Where does this leave us from a technical standpoint? Yeah, right now what we're looking at is the May contract for corn. This is a candlestick chart. And right now what I'm seeing here is a resistance level right up here around 676. Uh, we came up, we touched on it, uh, we, we started seeing some selling pressure, and, uh, and I would expect to see some support if you were to draw a trend line here right around 640 level. So I think we have a little ways to go. We may not get there today. We may touch on it tomorrow, but uh, look for some support right around 640. If we break through, you really have to kind of look at the larger picture here. This is a, is a large channel. There's a good chance we'd move back to that $6 and we'd touch on it. But uh, uh, we'll just have to see if 640 holds in, in the meantime. Why don't we take a look at soybeans, Brock? That's been a big player. Uh, been rallying for weeks on end. Yesterday we saw a little bit of selling, and again today we're down 18 cents. What are we looking like over there in the soybean market? Yeah, basically uh, for the May contract that we're looking at here, we see that we have the support around that 1350 area. There's also a 10-day moving average right below us there at about 1350 as well. 
If we break through these and actually close below these two levels, we could fall as far back as about $13. $12.90 is a good support level as well. So there's, there's not a whole lot of support in between $13.50 and $13 right now, so it's going to be important to watch where we close at today if we get below that $13.50 level. Well, that sounds fair enough. If you guys have any questions about what you saw here today, give us a call 877-472-4607. We'd be happy to set you up with a fire tip demo. You can uh, actually see these live quotes, get direct market access uh, in your office or uh, on your home computer. So give us a call. We'd be happy to hear from you. We'll see you on Thursday.